You know, Janelle, I really like getting ready for weddings. It's so much fun. So much fun to just dress up. It is, and I'm super excited for the couple. I think they're gonna be so cute. They are. <laughs> oh. oh, hey look, Marcy, it's everyone from Kids Club. Oh, hey guys, welcome <laughs> back. <laughs> Excuse us while we're getting ready for the wedding. Yes. So Marcy, I'm, you know like this wedding is gonna be amazing, and the celebration is amazing, yes. but I am so looking forward to an even greater celebration. Is that today? Why didn't you tell me about this? <laughs> no, Marcy, it's not today. It's a celebration of the consummation. Okay, that's a huge word. And also, am I invited? <laughs> Marcy, yes, you are invited. You all were invited when Jesus died for you. The key is accepting that invitation. But you're wondering what consummation is, right? Yes, because it's a huge word. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's kind of like making making something whole, making it complete. Like how when you have a necklace or something and it completes your outfit. Or like how an ending of a book completes the book. Right, or kind of like this is our last kids club that kind of completes the theory, sort of? Yeah, it completes the set. Right. Hmm. And so consummation is kind of like that. It's when God makes the world right again and completes the story that he's had for had for us since the beginning. Well, that's that's really huge, but I'm still kind of confused. That's fair. But why don't we listen to Aileen and uh, she'll kind of explain it for you. That's a good idea. And I'll keep working on your hair. <laughs> Sounds good. Thanks, Mars. Yeah. Okay, so for today, we're going to give Marcy two minutes to take this balloon, and without using her hands, to take it and drop it into that pail, without letting it touch the floor. And if it touches the floor, start all over, she gets to start from the fridge. Marcy. Two, one, go!
into our yard. The snow has melted, but even though the sun is shining, everything still looks drab. Our old farmhouse that no one lives in is falling apart. The truck is rusting. And even our brightly painted house, inside of it, it's not perfect. Some days there are hurtful or angry words spoken. Every one of us in our family has been sick at some time or other or felt pain. Nothing is perfect, but that's not how it always has been. If you've been listening to the other lessons, you know what happened. Come on inside. We're going to review what happened, but I want to give you hope. Just like the sunshine today gives me hope that this drab yard will look beautiful again, I want to give you the hope of Jesus coming back, what that means for us. Come on in. Welcome to our home. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Everything was very good. Actually, it was perfect. God put the first two people, Adam and Eve, in the beautiful Garden of Eden. He visited them there, and their lives were wonderful. They were, only had one rule. God gave them the rule that they were not to eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. However, one day, God's enemy, Satan, came to Eve in the form of a snake. He started her thinking that God was keeping something good from her. She decided to taste the fruit from the forbidden tree. Then her husband also ate the fruit. Their disobedience brought sin into the world and everything changed. God still loved them though and promised to one day send someone to save people from their sins. Although God loved the people he made, they did not love him. The world got so bad that God sent a flood to destroy everything. Only Noah and his family and enough animals to repopulate the world were saved. But a fresh start did not take away the sin in people's hearts. They still wanted to follow their own way rather than God's way. God had told Noah and his family that people were to spread out over all the earth. But this is what the people said. Come, let's build a great city for ourselves with a tower that reaches into the sky. This will make us famous and keep us from being scattered over all the world. God did not allow them to get away with their disobedience. He confused their language. Suddenly, they could not understand each other or work together. God used that to cause them to move out and populate the world. Sin remained a problem. But God had made a promise to send someone to save people from their sin. At just the right time, God sent his son to the world. He came as a baby and was given the name Jesus. When he was grown, he told people about his father, God, and how we should live. He did many things to help people and to show them what God is like. Unlike us, Jesus had no sin. He never did anything wrong. One day, he was arrested, beaten, and nailed to a cross. He chose to die on that cross to take the punishment for our sins and to make it possible for us to be forgiven and have a friendship with God. Jesus died, was buried, and then rose again. Then one day, right before his friend's eyes, He was taken up into a cloud while they were watching, and they could no longer see him. As they strained to see him rising into heaven, two white-robed men suddenly stood among them. Men of Galilee, they said, why are you standing there staring into heaven? Jesus has been taken from you into heaven, but someday he will return from heaven in the same way you saw him go. 
Jesus had prepared them for this. Listen to what he told them the night he was arrested. Don't let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God. Trust also in me. There's more than enough room in my father's home. If this were not so, would I have told you that I am going to prepare a place for you? When everything is ready, I will come and get you, so that you will always be with me where I am, and you know the way to where I am going. No, we don't know, Lord, Thomas said. We have no idea where you're going, so how can we know the way? Jesus, this is what Jesus answered. Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. And you find that in John chapter 14, verse 6. Jesus was telling them he was going back to be with God in heaven. And that believing in, trusting in him, was the only way to one day live with God forever. He was telling them that one day he would come back. To take them to be with him. Listen to the exciting way that that will all come about. 1 Thessalonians 4, 13 to 17 says this. And now, dear brothers and sisters, he's talking to the Christians, those who had trusted in Jesus and had their sins forgiven. Dear brothers and sisters, we want you to know what will happen to the believers who have died, so you will not grieve like people who have no hope. For since we believe that Jesus died and was raised to life again, we also believe that when Jesus returns, God will bring back with him the believers who have died. We tell you this directly from the Lord. We who are still living when the Lord returns will not meet him ahead of those who have died. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a commanding shout, with the voice of the archangel and with the trumpet call of God. First, the Christians who have died will rise from their graves. Then, together with them, we who are still alive and remain on the earth will be caught up in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. Then we will be with the Lord forever. One day... Jesus will come back with all who have died believing in him. They will come from heaven with him. Their once dead bodies will be raised and they will be given new living bodies. The living believers will be given new bodies and all the believers will go to be with the Lord Jesus forever. God had two of Jesus' friends write about Jesus coming back and what the place he was preparing was like. This is what John wrote in Revelation 21, 1-4. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the old heaven and the old earth had disappeared, and the sea was also gone. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, like a bride, beautifully dressed for her husband. I heard a loud shout from the throne saying, Look, God's home is now among his people. He will live with them and they will be his people. God himself will be with them. He will wipe every tear from their eyes and there will be no more death or sorrow or crying or pain. All these things are gone forever. The place that is being prepared is called the New Jerusalem. It will be beautiful, but the best part of living there will be that God is there with us. Besides that, there will be no sadness, no pain, no sickness, nothing bad. Even the physical world as we know it will be changed when Jesus returns. Peter, another friend of Jesus, tells us that Jesus has promised a new heaven and a new earth that is without sin. Oh, what a wonderful place that will be. Peter also wrote this.
Most importantly, I want to remind you that in the last days, and the last days are the days right before Jesus comes back, he says, I want to remind you that in the last days, scoffers will come, mocking the truth and following their own desires. Those people will know the truth, but they'll make fun of it, and they'll do whatever they want to do. They will say, what happened to the promise that Jesus is coming again? From before the time of our ancestors, everything has remained the same since the world was first created. Is that true? Has everything stayed the same since the world was first created? No, it certainly hasn't. Adam and Eve's disobedience brought sin and sin ruined everything. It changed everything. Gone was the perfect world. Then he goes on to write this. They deliberately forget that God made the heavens by the word of his command and brought the earth out from the water and surrounded it with water. Then he used the water to destroy the ancient world with a mighty flood. And by the same word, the present heavens and earth have been stored up for fire. They are being kept for the day of judgment when ungodly people will be destroyed. But you must not forget this one thing, dear friends. A day is like a thousand years to the Lord, and a thousand years is like a day. The Lord isn't really being slow about his promise, as some people think. No, he is being patient for your sake. He does not want anyone to be destroyed, but wants everyone to repent. But the day of the Lord will come as unexpectedly as a thief. Then the heavens will pass away with a terrible noise, and the very elements themselves will disappear in fire and the earth and everything on it will be found to deserve judgment. With the promise of a new heaven and earth comes the promise of judgment. God judged the world in Noah's day and of Abel. This time, the judgment will be by fire and will be final. Revelation 20.10 tells us this about Satan. Then the devil was Satan, who had deceived them, was thrown into the fiery lake of burning sulfur, joining the beast and the false prophet. There they will be tormented, day and night, forever and ever. Satan will never be able to cause trouble again. Verse 15 of that chapter says that those who have not believed in Jesus will also be thrown into the lake of fire. They will spend forever separated from God. That is why Jesus is patient in coming. He wants to give everyone an opportunity to believe in him. In the beginning, God created a wonderful world. Sin ruined it, but God loves us and sent Jesus to save us from our sin. When Jesus returns, those who have trusted in him can look forward to a wonderful new world and life with him. In the second last verse in the Bible, Jesus says, Yes, I am coming soon. The response is, Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. I agree. Come, Lord Jesus. I hope you have trusted in, believed in Jesus, and had your sins forgiven. If so, you too can look forward to his return and say, Come, Lord Jesus! Hey everyone, so our verse for today is 1 Thessalonians 4.16. So you can just say it with me. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a commanding shout, with the voice of the archangel and with the trumpet call of God. First, the believers who have died will rise from their graves. First Thessalonians 4.16. Good job. We'll say it another time without taking out any words, and then we'll try taking out some words. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a commanding shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trumpet call of God. 
First, the believers who have died will rise from their graves. First Thessalonians 4.16. All right, we'll try taking out a couple of words now. Uh, how about from heaven? And maybe Archangel. And believers. I don't know if we can start by taking three words out, but we'll see. Let's try this again. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a commanding shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trumpet call of God. First, the believers who have died will rise from their graves. 1 Thessalonians 4.16. Very good, you guys. Let's see, we'll take out a couple more words. How about the Lord and died? I think we can do one more. I think we'll do one more. Graves. Okay, let's see if we can do this. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a commanding shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trumpet call of God. First, the believers who have died will rise from their graves. First Thessalonians 4.16. Wow, that was a little tricky for me. Well, I hope you guys keep memorizing this because memorizing the word of God is important. Well, Janelle, I think I can definitely say that after watching Amin's video, that the consummation is going to be an even bigger celebration than the wedding that we're going to today. <laughs> I agree, Marcy. I am so looking forward to this celebration. But, in order to attend, you have to accept the invitation. Right. And I think we, were, we heard about this in one of our previous episodes that, um, about the free gift that God gives, hey? Yeah, I think so. And, and about the cross and how the gift is free. Right. God offers this gift to everybody. It's a free gift, but you have to accept the gift, accept the invitation. So I have to accept that. You have to accept that. And for you guys listening, that's a choice that you have to make if you're going to accept that or not. So on the day of the consummation, there will be some people that won't be there because not everybody is going to accept this gift. So it is up to you whether you're going to accept this or not. Yeah. And if you guys have any questions, feel free to let us know. Comment on Facebook or get Give a hold a of message. us. Yeah, yeah, send us a message. And uh, we'd be love to answer your questions on accepting Jesus Christ into your life. Or anything else too, a random question. If you just want to talk. Yep. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I guess that about wraps up our kids clubs, hey? It's a consummation <laughs> of kids club. <laughs> yes. Yes. So thank you guys for tuning in to our seven C's of history kids clubs. Um, if you guys missed an episode at all, you can go to our YouTube channel or over to our Facebook page and it should all be there. So yeah. yeah. We are hoping to see you guys hopefully in person this summer. So yeah, hopefully we see you guys around. <laughs> Have a good one and enjoy your summer. <laughs>